Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome um, to this um, seminar. Dusha Azidan, Haile Hoshoma did, Va Baraya Hamer, Salinoa Shoma, Haile Mobarak. Happy New Year to everybody. And um, in addition to our four speakers from uh, Iran, I'm very pleased to be able to say that we have um, two speakers from France. One has come from the uh, U.S. and there are two speakers um, coming from um, Durham. But there are sadly a number of people who for one reason or another um, haven't been able to come, which has necessitated some changes from the original program, not the program that you have now, but the original one. Uh, I'll just um, tell you what those are. Um, Mr. Hossein Mahluji is uh, stuck in Switzerland and waiting for his carte de séjour. But he sent um, his paper on the work of the Kashan Cultural Heritage Foundation, which is um, going to be read by um, Dr. Sarkosh. Then Dr. Mohsen uh, Javari of the University of Kashan um, didn't get his visa uh, in time, but he has also uh, sent his paper, which is on the present state of Sialkum, recommendations for its maintenance and preservation, and that's going to be um, read by uh, Professor Hassan Fazili. Um, others who would have liked to come but um, didn't get their visas in time uh, include um, uh, Dr. Malak, the uh, uh, excavator um, of um, Sialk, Dr. Hamida Chubak, um, Dr. Um, Musavi Kopa, and Mr. Uh, Nazem Razavi, the mayor of um, Kashan. Uh, and lastly, Dr. Barbara Helving was to have joined us, but had to cancel a few days ago due to pressure of um, other work. Um, well, some of you will be asking why the Iran Heritage Foundation is organizing this conference, and I think really that question's already been answered by our deputy chairman, uh, Ali Reza Rastagar, and by um, His Excellency, um, the ambassador, uh, they both described how we had an earlier conference or forum um, in October, and uh, it's very much the remit of the Iran Heritage Foundation, we think, to act as a bridge between colleagues uh, in Iran uh, and colleagues uh, in the rest of the world, and I think we're well-placed um, to do that. Um, well, today we're talking, of course, about Tapi um, Sialk, but that in itself is part of a larger program to generate interest um, in the Kashan area. And as you heard, uh, we had uh, in January a very interesting lecture by Mr. Akbar Heli on the restoration of historic houses um, in uh, Kashan. But um, before I talk, say, very briefly in a general way about Tapi Sialk, uh, just let me try and put the ancient site um, into a bit um, of a context. So something's gone wrong here. Um, yeah, there we are. Um, well, uh, Tapi Sialk, uh, as you know, is um, situated on the uh, west side of the Dash du Kavir, the great uh, salt desert, uh, and uh, the town is arranged around an oasis, uh, and it's this uh, strategic location that accounts for um, the importance of the city of Kashan itself, but also, of course, for the uh, importance of Tapi Sialk um, in antiquity. Um, the origins of the city of Kashan go back to the very beginning um, of the Islamic period, if not before. Uh, there's a fortress in the middle of the city dating from the Seljuk period, and in the 12th to 14th centuries, Kashan was an important center for the production of pottery and tiles, and later, of course, it also became very famous for its carpets. Then a disastrous um, earthquake in the late 18th century destroyed most of the um, city, but it was rebuilt at the end of the 18th and in the 19th um, century, uh, and it's many of the wonderful houses that were built in that period 
uh, which still survive today. And Kashan now has more examples of traditional Persian architecture than any other city um, in Iran. And particularly um, um, famous examples, buildings of this type, uh, are the Taba Tabai house here and the Borujadi house um, there. But there are many others uh, which Mr. Heli described to us uh, in his recent lecture. Then um, a few kilometers to the southwest of Kashan is the beautiful um, Finn garden, the Bari Finn, which uh, in its um, present form dates from the time of Shah Abbas from around about um, 1600, but it was uh, enlarged and made more beautiful in the 19th century. And uh, with streams of water uh, running through the garden, uh, which divide it into um, segments, uh, it's a wonderful example of a typical um, Persian garden. And it was here at Bargi Finn uh, in the baths that the Qajar Chancellor, Amir Kabir, um, was uh, murdered on the orders of Nasruddin Shah in 1852. Then, um, I think this uh, the ambassador referred to this, in 2007, Bari Fin was put on Iran's list of tentative sites to be considered for um, world heritage status. The um, ancient site of Tapi Sialk is on the um, outskirts of Kushan. You can see it here to the southwest of the city center. There are two mounds, uh, known as the North Mound and the South Mound, and two adjacent cemeteries known as um, A and B. Occupation goes back at least to the fifth or sixth um, millennium, uh, maybe even earlier than that, and Dr. Bigler is going to be talking to us shortly about human habitation in the area, not necessarily at the site, uh, even in the last ice age. And occupation continued um, on and off until uh, around um, 550 BC. And I should say, incidentally, that the absence of Achaemenid occupation um, at Sialk uh, is surprising uh, and probably needs to be um, investigated. Um, like um, Barifin, uh, Sialk is on the Iranian tentative list, number six on the list, for nomination as a World Heritage Site. Um, here is the site uh, as it um, looks today. And uh, I should, for those of you who haven't been there, um, I should tell you that the whole surface of the mound uh, is absolutely carpeted um, with uh, potsherds and other archaeological debris. Um, the first excavations um, at the site were undertaken by the French archaeologist uh, Roman Gershman from uh, 1933 onwards, and before going on, I'll just say uh, a few words um, about um, Professor Gershman. He's here um, on the right in the front row, and next to him is his wife, um, Tanya. Um, Roman Gershman was of Jewish-Russian origin, and he was born in what is now the Ukraine in 1895. Um, he was called up into the Russian army in 1914, joined the counter-revolutionaries in 1917, and after the communist uh, victory, he went um, to Paris via Istanbul and Palestine. Uh, there in Paris, he studied archaeology and ancient languages at the Sorbonne and the École de Louvre, and in 1931, he was appointed director of the French archaeological mission in Persia and began an association with Iran that was to last for more than um, 40 years. And throughout this time, he was accompanied um, by his wife, uh, Tanya, who he'd met in Paris while she was studying to become um, a dentist. She joined him on all his excavations, drew the illustrations for his um, books, and in 1970 wrote an amusing autobiography called Archaeology Malgré Moi. 
Um, well, Gershman first worked at uh, Tapi Gion near Nahavand in um, 1931 and 32, and then at Tapi Sialk in 1933, 1934, and 1937. Um, during the Second World War, he worked briefly um, in um, Afghanistan, um, but then returned um, to Iran um, after the war and went on to work at uh, Susa. Uh, and sites like Badr Nishande and Masjid i Suleiman. Um, he eventually died in Budapest in 1979, actually while attending an archaeological conference. Um, well, in the course of his uh, long career, uh, Gershman found a great deal and also published a great deal, and although um, much of what he wrote uh, has been attacked by revisionist historians. Uh, there's no doubt that he made a major contribution to um, studies of uh, ancient Iran. Um, some of us, the, these are his, this is the publication, sorry, I'm going to be too far forward. Yeah. Um, and some of us here grew up on um, Gershman's books, like his uh, Pelican History of Iran that was first published in um, 1954. And he was in many ways the grand old man of Iranian um, archaeology. And two anecdotes um, suffice to illustrate this. At the Munich conference in 1976, shortly before he died, which was uh, the only time I ever saw him, um, after he delivered his paper, uh, he was asked, I think, by Shapo Shabazi what his authority was for making a particular statement. And he looked at uh, Shabazi as if he was completely crazy and said, L'autorité, l'autorité, c'est moi. <laughs> and also around this time, I sent him uh, an offprint of one of my first articles, and he sent back a letter which started off, mon jeune collègue, or mon avis, in my young colleague, in my opinion, etc., 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 which I've always thought was a wonderful put down. <laughs> um, well, as I said, he, he worked at Siak between 1933 and 1937. Um, this is the uh, final report of his uh, excavations so there. The finds from the excavation were divided mainly between Paris and Tehran, and many of them are currently on display in the Louvre, and I hope uh, our Louvre colleagues um, uh, will uh, not mind if I use um, the exhibitions uh, in the Louvre um, uh, as uh, a way of um, uh, illustrating uh, what I want to say about um, CR. Well, this large case in room seven has got mainly material from levels um, one to four, that is a very approximately from the fifth to the um, third millennium, and we can be see, and we can see here uh, uh, painted pottery, including the very distinctive brown on cream wares uh, that are often decorated with um, ibexes and uh, leopards and um, other animals and that sort of thing. Um, there's uh, also, um, dating from this period, um, cylinder seals, beads, um, uh, protoliterate uh, pictographic um, uh, tablets, and um, uh, what we call beveled rim bowls. Um, these are, this is an example of one of the uh, very early um, protoliterate uh, tablets, which are typical of the proto-Elamite civilization, um, which uh, flourished um, a little before and a little after um, 3000 BC and is best represented uh, at sites like um, Tali Malian, uh, Susa, and uh, Tepi um, Siak. And this proto-Elamite civilization had contacts over a w very wide area um, extending from southern Iraq, um, Mesopotamia, Sumer, um, to Afghanistan um, and uh, beyond. Uh, and incidentally, uh, Barbara Hellring was to have um, spoken to us um, about uh, Tapi Sialk as a center of um, this uh, proto-Elamite um, civilization. 
Uh, this is one of the beveled rim bowls of the Uruk period, Uruk culture, um, from um, Tapi Sialk. Um, some of the later Iron Age material found by Gershman, also exhibited in the Louvre in um, room 11, uh, much of it comes from graves in the, uh, what is known as Necropolis um, B. And you can see here the characteristic um, beak spouted vessels with red painted decoration on a cream um, background. And there are also from um, graves um, of this period. We're now in the Iron Age, um, very approximately. This is Iron Age periods two and mostly three, dating between 1550 um, BC. And there are horse trappings. You can see uh, the bronze banjo-shaped um, um, things at the top right, uh, and horse bits and um, cheek pieces. Uh, this is um, a board game. It's the type known as the game of um, 58 uh, holes. There's a close-up of it. And many of these objects are illustrated by uh, Gershman, drawn actually by Tanya uh, Gershman, and illustrated um, in both his scholarly and his um, uh, more popular books. And examples of this Iron Age pottery from Sialka to be found in uh, many museums around the world. This is a piece which is now in the British Museum. Well, Gershman associated all this material with what he called the coming of the Iranians, or more specifically, the immigration of the Medes and the Persians. Um, but while this may be very broadly um, correct, it's a highly sensitive issue, with um, some scholars arguing that pots don't equal peoples, and, uh, and so on. Uh, and also, given that most of the finds probably date from the Iron III period, which is uh, 800 to 550, uh, this would be late in the overall scheme of the arrival of tribes speaking Indo-Iranian um, um, languages. Um, a recent uh, study of the Iron Age um, at Sialk uh, has been um, by uh, Dr. Fahimi, who was to have come here to the conference, but uh, he's actually detained um, doing an archaeological excavation in Germany um, at, uh, at this moment. Further excavations at uh, Tapi Siak were undertaken under the directorship um, of Dr. Malek Shah Mirzadi in 1999 to 2004. It's a matter of regret that he hasn't been able to come um, today. But there are at least um, four volumes of final reports um, on his work. Uh, you can see um, two of them uh, here. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, Dr. Nezafati will doubtless be referring, referring to the silversmiths of Sialk when he talks to us later about um, ancient metallurgy. Um, it may be worth um, mentioning here something about the ziggurat of Sialk, uh, which the ambassador referred to, uh, also known as the Great Construction that was interpreted by Dr. Malik as a proto-Elamite um, um, ziggurat. But um, Mehdad Malikzadeh and Reza Nasseri have recently shown that decorated bricks um, used in the construction um, date from the um, Iron III um, period. There's one of these bricks from Seattle. Uh, in the um, middle illustration um, up at the uh, top there. Um, uh, and they, um, they suggest that the whole construction um, might be of uh, Iron Age date uh, and its interpretation as, of as, as a ziggurat does need um, to be um, revised. Um, recently, Professor um, Hassan Fazali and directed excavations at Tapi Siak in 2008 uh, and 9, and he worked there in Tapi Siak North with British archaeologists, um, including um, Robin Cunningham. They found very important evidence for the prehistoric period at Siak and uh, elsewhere, and, and uh, that has significance for a prehistory uh, in Iran generally. 
uh, we'll be hearing um, reports about their work later. And I understand also there have now been new excavations um, or sondages in uh, 2015 um, directed by Dr. Mohsen uh, Javari of the University of Kashan. Well, that's a, a very general um, introduction. I don't want to steal uh, any of anybody's thunder. Uh, so now um, I'll step down without further ado and hand over um, to the uh, experts. And I, for one, am looking forward to uh, the series of detailed presentations about Tepe that we're going to uh, hear today. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>